Hi folks, welcome back. So uh, Wallflowers has just been released and um, we've done the first three singles from it. Um, so we've done Vortex, Mediator and Wallflower, um, all videos, you know. Um, but rather than waiting on any sort of further videos to come, I don't know if there's any videos being made for or any future singles off the album, but I'm just going to start working my way through the album now and I'm going to do it in order, track one, track two, etc. the whole way through. So I'll create a playlist in the description if you want to go and listen to my thoughts track by track the whole way through. I'm going to stick with the same format as always, which is I'm going in cold. Just put the song on, listen to it for the first time, and then give you some thoughts on it. Format I've sort of landed on seems to work quite well with Ginger because copyright doesn't seem to be an issue. I'm going on to YouTube. It's nice to be able to just play the song in its entirety get a, a view of the whole thing, which is the way I would normally listen to music. But anyway, what I'm going to do, I think, with this is I'm going to play each song from the beginning to the end, which will be the first time I hear it, maybe give some thoughts, initial thoughts, and then I'll go back and maybe run it through again. And any sort of dissection or analysis or whatever is going to take place at that section. So bear that in mind. Here we go. Call me a symbol. After three, two, one, go. <laughs> Thank you. 
Ooh. Straight out of the gate, full on assault. I'm right on board with what seems to be like a kind of new direction they're going on. There's something really dark and gritty going on here. Stylistically a bit different, really, from the you know the singles that have come out. Um, although, quite clearly, it's going to sit well within the context of the whole album. I guess the sort of aggressive nature and more simplistic in sense of time signatures and so on. I mean, this one seemed like it was in 4-4 the whole way through. There was a couple of moments there where I was kind of expecting it to be you know, going straight into our time signature. Just, just thought that was going to happen. With those sort of accents coming in at the end of bars instead of, the, you know, it's not coming in on the first beat of the bar. It's coming in at the end of the previous the previous bar. So you get that, you know, syn- syncopation there. I was kind of waiting on those syncop- syncopated notes to lead us into like five or seven or, you know, any other sort of odd time signature. Still very complex in, in terms of the rhythmic stuff that's going on, but didn't sound to me like a lot of time signatures all, all over the place, you know. Loving the sort of really gritty, dark kind of um, death metal kind of vibes in this. Um, we'll go back. But initial impressions are um, straight, you know, straight in love with this. You know, some really, really beautiful stuff going on there, like achingly beautiful. Sometimes that word beautiful can maybe be attributed to like pretty things, um, but there's there's beauty and darkness, you know. So that's the kind of beautiful I'm talking about. Very dissonant, um, pained, melancholic, anguished kind of emotions coming out in those sort of cleaner vocal sections. I know I've talked an awful lot about the bass, the drums and the vocals kind of feeling like some of the previous songs from this album so far, feeling that they're the sort of main epicenter of everything. Feels kind of like the guitar is more um, surrounding the music as opposed to driving it. This one here has felt more traditional in terms of like a a riff driven song um, for the most part. But anyway, Right, so let's do it. Let's go back uh, to the beginning. And we'll do a little bit of a breakdown on this. So here we go. So kind of traditional in the sense of the, the phrasing there, you know, that's kind of where you'd expect the vocals to come in. Um, interesting, you know, this is the, t- uh, the first track off the album. There's many different ways that you can approach opening an album, <laughs> obviously. Endless ways, um, whatever way you want to hit the audience. It seems to me that they're out guns blazing. Um, rather than making the first track a bit of a sort of head scratcher, they're like full on assault. Um, probably more palatable to the more like non-musicians out there listening to it. You know, I would imagine uh, a bit easier to sort of follow everything that's going on, you know. Um, so it's certainly a beginning, you know. It almost feels familiar to me, you know, um, even though I've never listened to it before. The Tom fills there, loving the, the triplet feel and everything, you know. Um, I just love triplet fills, even in riffing. As opposed to you know in in duplets like you know we maybe we had a, a fill going da 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 or da 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 there's a lovely roll to groups of three especially at very very fast speed like this here so in between those big they're all little subdivisions of three in there you know I love that it's a real flow. even hear the guitar going along with the fills you know so we've got the guitar bass and drums again that knitted together kind of sound right from the very beginning there's something reminiscent in this when it goes up to the higher notes it's reminding me of another song but it's not forthcoming at the moment it might come to me later i'm not going to dwell on it but there's something down that is reminding me of something else before i just can't place it right now um like i say so i'll not dwell on it i'll just move on That is so groovy. Probably looks kind of odd, whatever I'm doing physically. I feel like I'm not just going like this. It's something really captivating, but the way I feel like I want to move, listen to this, you know, it feels like it's very much 
slow motion and then quick and slow motion, you know? Um, it'd actually be really cool to see somebody doing like an interpretive dance or something to this. Um, I know some bands do that, you know, even like really heavy bands, you know, you get like a ballerina or an inter you know, interpretive dance. Something about the way the music's kind of, you know, that, like the end of the Vortex video where the camera goes outside into the, the open sort of city that's in, in the Vortex. You know, visually what was happening there was very similar to the sort of impact. Dun, 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 boom, and you're getting these ex kind of like explosion type stuff that was going on, you know, um, in sync with the music. That's kind of reminiscent of that part in that song to me there, you know, at, you know, anyway. Yeah, so when the vocals come in there, you know, that riff, it feels like a, a sort of a reworked riff from the beginning. You know, it's still got the same sort of groove there, but um, I'm loving the space in the guitar. You know, there's, there seems to be space between the vocal and the, and the guitar. You're not really getting in one another's way. That's the slayer beat in it. That's way back to like um I'm sure Dave Lombardo was playing that as well, wasn't he? Like, you know, um but it makes me think of something off Divine Intervention, you know, Paul Bostaff on the drums. First time I think I've ever thought of Slayer listening to Ginger. Also, um, sort of more traditional in the sense of the palm muting, you know. So there's definitely, um, definitely showing some influence from you know late '80s, early '90s thrash kind of stuff in there, and death metal. I've got a Cryptopsy T-shirt on, you know. Actually, some of the blast beats in there nearly made me think of that. There's a definitely a death metal kind of feeling that I haven't really. Don't really think I've, I've really associated Ginger with death metal in the songs that I've heard so far. Um, I think I've talked a little bit about black metal in terms of the, the beats. I know the the blast beat in this is still not a it's not a traditional together Cannibal Corpse um, snare hi hat you know um, in sync with one another. It's still rolled, um, but there's something to do with the riffing in this. Um, it, it feels more gritty and grindcore and. Um, sludgy. It feels more like that kind of aspect than than sort of the, the, everything that I would sort of associate with like a black metal kind of feel. Um, at least that's my thoughts on it. Let's go on. All those triplets again, and accenting with uh, symbols and so on. Again, very uh, reminiscent of older genres. I think this is maybe a bit of a tip of the hat. Some of this to maybe some of their influences. Um, at least this section. So that's that section there that the first time round, I, I remember kind of, that's where I was expecting the time signatures to go, but it is straight four, you know, so they're playing with the syncopation, but it is straight four. Yeah, Roman's really being the star of the show this time, you know, for me. Um, love everything, 
but the guitar tone is harsh and biting and brutal in all the right ways. My ears are being pulled to the guitar as the predominant instrument, which is usually like the bass or the drums or the vocals. And the guitar has so far in a lot of songs has felt like a secondary kind of role, um, an equally important secondary role in the songs that I've heard. There's so many songs of Ginger I haven't heard. Um, so that is, don't take that as a general generalization. I'm just talking about the songs that I've heard so far. This one sounds very guitar driven and my ears being pulled to the riffing. I love the riffing in this. Very aggressive. <laughs> To kiss my best bit, they are cold in here We're trampled over them, my God Perfection does not appear It's all over the dead man Perfection is what they fear But we'll gladly give the life away For them There's a death metal bits, by the way. That tram, that puts me in mind of like, you know, this sort of early '90s kind of thrash death kind of grindcore kind of stuff out there. You know, I I was maybe 16, 17. That's all I listened to. <laughs> well, not that's not true, but nearly everything I listened to probably that that year was just all. Death, some sort of type of death metal, like, and that's sending me back to my childhood. Won't you take a look at me? Surrounded, can't you say? No fear to burn your eyes. And how how perfect I can be. Say something about the production there. I'm loving the the lack of compression on the snare drum. I guess with a band like Ginger and the space they occupy in metal, it, it would be easy for the drums to sound kind of stripped of all dynamics. Obviously, um, Vlad is a really dynamic player. And the fact that, you know, it seems like he plays very lightly. Um, he still has power in his playing, but you never see him like fully laying in. You know, he seems to be getting, he seems like quite a light player. Um, did you listen to the real, um, the tone change of the snare as he was laying in to that? Da, 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 da. You know, if that was overly compressed, that would just all sound sort of homogenized and lacking that. There's a real rawness to that. You're actually, it sounds like the tone and the snap is, um, you know, biting and moving about. Um, for an album in 2021 of a big, powerful metal band, that's really refreshing to me that, you know, um, that it's not being stripped of all of that. It's kind of odd that there, you know, um, I like that, you know, that she's, she's got this sort of affectation in her voice again, you know, with the harmonies, you know, I guess if you, you're doubling up the vocals, you could add more screams. There's something that there's, that's, uh, there's something um, jarring, but I, I like the jarring aspect of it, you know, with all the heavy music, the screaming and the way that the vocals are delivered in there, it, it, it doesn't sound like something I've maybe even heard before. I've heard Tatiana's vocals where she, you know, she moves from genre to genre, seemingly, you know, um, with different sort of affectations in her voice. But I don't think if I've heard anything yet where you're hearing the layers of that kind of style, style that she has mixed with that pure aggression. So there's something to do with whatever way the vocals were in that little section there. Sounds kind of new to me. My identity, I'm overthrown with self-love To kiss my best fears, they are crawling here What trampers over them, my side Boom, boom you know, that paddle note, despite all the boom, you know, that sort of thematically right through the piece, that constant boom, you know, that's class. They are crawling here, what trampers over them, my side. Oh, here we go. I love this bit. Ah, now I don't remember hearing that bass run the first time. That was because my ears again were being drawn really to the guitar in this. Da 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 ba da da ba da da. Those rising arpeggios, and we got into some lovely harmony here as it goes on. We're really looking forward to hearing this again. But 
that little bass run bit is a sneaky little <laughs> We little, little slides in there, really nice. I'm loving that diminished harmony there. You know, your ears straight away you can tell that's a diminished chord in the guitar. Da 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 da. That last one there. Um, and if we can briefly talk about theory, when I talk about a diminished chord, you know, as opposed to like a major chord, minor chord, and the different extensions. Diminished seventh, you know, which is what that sounds like. The distance of, of the intervals between every note is a minor third or three semitones, um, or in America, three half steps. I think hopefully we've covered everybody there and left anybody out. Um, so if I give you an example, so say the notes would be C, E, you know, so C, D, E, third note, but it'd be E flat. And then the next note would be G, but that's also um, flat, and so it'd be G flat. So C, E flat, G flat. And then the seventh note, although you could say it's an A, because it's the seventh, it would actually be a B double flat. So B flat, that's being flattened twice. So B double flat is the same as an A. You get that kind of stuff um, when you're listening to uh, soundtracks of horror films, diminished chords. Um, some of the old classical pieces by the likes of Liszt, um, he used lots of diminished drums to kind of get, he had like the Dante Sonata, you know, to get like themes of hell and all that, you know, sort of dissonance. He straight into diminished chords there. Like, I love the way that it's rising as well, you know, it's not, so it, yeah. it's kind of like classical music, that, it really is, that you don't just have the riff played four times. The riff has structure to it, and the, the, the structure is that the rhythmic element um, to it, more than anything, is repeated. Um, but the fact that the note choices, the chords, um, like it's almost like the inversions are changing. Um, I would need to listen to it uh, more times to give you a breakdown of the actual chords, you know, because I'm sure they're not all diminished chords. The last one was definitely a diminished chord. But um, yeah, just the way it's climbing up, the fact that every bar, the guitar climbs and climbs and climbs. It's not the same note every time. It's very like classical music. I really love that. This section, especially when Tatiana come in, I love this bit. Yeah, they're not diminished chords, those. That is, that's definitely a diminished chord. Oh yes, the fact that everything comes together there, you know, like actual note by note, da 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 da. Love Eugene's bass line in that. Um, the guitar line is my favorite bit of all that whole section. I love the chord choices and the chord voicings that you, uh, um, Roman is is using there. Like primarily, the first time I listened to that bit through, I was mainly listening to um, Roman's guitar. You know, that was the main thing pulling me in. But uh, the bass uh, that Eugene's playing there, you know, it's very very cleverly chosen to not get in the way of those sort of da 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 you know that's all in there and it would be difficult to create a bass line that is you know providing the space for the guitar but at the same time is still um you know holds its own and that's what i really feel that's going on there love that it is me on the night oh. it is me want to feel the most don't deny my absolution Lovely note choices on the really deep notes there. The bass kind of sounds a little alien sort of sounding. Da, da, da. The first time I listened to that three, I actually thought that might have been some sort of synthesizer. It's an unusual tone going on in the bass there. I mean, we're relying on big, big syncopation. Dum, 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 dum. Love that kind of stuff. keeping the tension in the drums, but like way, way back and to hear the dynamics 
you know, snare, everything very, very soft, very jazzy kind of sounding, you know. Again, there's that dynamics from the dun 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 Lovely production. Very organic, the way everything's moving. The, the trajectory of the, the composition, you can hear that. Very improvised sounding, you know, taking themes that we've already got and just letting the music kind of move on. Talked about that sort of at length a little bit before. So I'm just pointing it out because I'm hearing recurrent themes in their composition style. Lovely dark choices of chords are that you know is very bleak sound in that. I love that gritty and grimy. You notice that uh, the bass guitar and the bass drum is using that sort of syncopated rhythm from earlier. Dum, dum, dum. They're carrying that forward and now uh, Roman's back into the sort of arpeggios. Um, so something thematically there, we're, we're, we're sort of mixing up the recipe that's already been. Um, so although we've got this sort of organic kind of trajectory, again, it's that melting pot of things that we've already heard and then reusing them, reworking them and changing the order of them. Again, very classical in nature. Beautiful vocals. There's that thing again there, you know, with the guitar going up, da 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 Each time it moves up, you can hear the harmony instead of just the same thing. Loving this. is unreal it just builds and builds and builds to almost like it's you know it's palpable da 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 it's a class class fill there with the snare let's just pick that up again quickly there's something else in there as well. Is there like a sub bass or something on the da 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 da? Something feels like there's something else in the production. Boom. I have to go and wipe myself down here. So um, thanks for watching, keep an eye out for the next one, loving this, heavy, see yous.